Hey everyone, this is Marvel here and welcome back to Let's Play Europa Universalis 4. So, I'm going to continue where I left off. I'm moving down to this province to siege it, because the rebels took over. Also, there is a new decision in national decisions, which is related to the spread of Protestantism. And so, if I decided to stay Catholic, I could embrace the Counter-Reformation, which would give me plus two missionaries, plus two percent missionary strength, but it would also increase my technology cost and idea cost by five percent. So I think I'll pass on that. I definitely don't want increased technology cost and idea cost. My technology cost is already increased by 20% because I'm part of the Eastern group, so I will have to westernize at some point in this game. So I'm almost definitely going to go Protestant, but not just yet. I have to wait until I actually form the Commonwealth. But the majority of my provinces will be Protestant. I will still have to convert some of them, but it will be easier to convert the Catholic ones to Protestant than other way around. And I actually like the reduced idea cost for going Protestant. Minus 10%, that's actually going to be quite useful. Anyway, right now I'm pretty much waiting for my administrative power to get the last level of administrative technology. I don't plan going to war while I'm waiting. I did lower my army maintenance to zero. Mostly because I want to save as much money as possible. My income is really low right now, mostly because of all of these protestant provinces. I'm getting minus 40% tax modifier and minus 40% goods, which affects my trade income. So that's really bad. Lose 50 administrative power or lose 10 prestige? I guess I'm going to lose 10 prestige. I don't want to lose administrative power. I need to avoid losing administrative power and stability. Because in order to form the Commonwealth, I need both level 10 administrative technology and I need plus 3 stability at the same time. So my plan right now is to get level 10 first and then plus 3 stability after that. Because there are some random events that could lower my stability. And if my ruler dies, my stability will go down as well. And that could happen. How old is he anyway? 45, so I don't think he's going to die just yet, but even if he doesn't, there are random events that lower your stability regardless of which option to pick. There's only bad and worse. I've had some of these events in the past and in some of my test games that I played. So I'm just going to wait. I know this is not super exciting, but I really can't afford going to war right now, especially with my economy in this state. I'm getting 4.03 gold per month, and that's with my army maintenance at zero. Well, not at zero, but at minimum. I'm only paying 7.16. If it was at full, I would have to pay 32.53, so that's a huge difference there. Anyway, what's this? Auto saving, great. I didn't boss. Lose one stability, yeah, that's what I was talking about. I can't afford losing one stability. Plus 2.5% diplomatic technology cost. That's not too bad. I don't really care about diplomatic technology all that much, so I think I'll go for this one. I might actually have to save up my diplomatic power, because I think I will have to convert some of the provinces in current Lithuanian territory to Polish culture, because they will be non-accepted culture. Yes, this one for example, this is non-accepted and Ruthenian are not accepted as well. So there are quite a few provinces that I will have to convert to Polish culture and that requires diplomatic power. So I'm going to save up my diplomatic power, which means I don't really care about that modifier. I could still spend my diplomatic power... Actually no, I maxed out my trade ideas, never mind that. So yeah, I'm going to save up. Other than that, I guess I'll just use speed 5. Let's check revolt risk. Yeah, it's pretty good. I sent my army to Moldavia because I had increased uh, revolt risk in Moldavia. And with my army in here, I get minus 
for friendly troops present in the province. So that's why I sent my army there. There we go, the siege is done. So, I'm still working on improving my relations with Hungary. I need to get 190 opinion with them to be able to start annexing them. I want to do this as soon as possible. But it looks like I'll just have to wait. I'm about to hit 200 cap. Improved relations. This can only go up to plus 200. Yeah, another province converted, but this is actually good. Actually no, that's not good because it converted to reformed, not to protestant. So that's bad. Yeah, this is bad. Because I will be converting to protestant, not to reformed. Oh well, whatever. Minus 30 opinion with Bohemia. Yeah, well, I will have to take this option. I can't afford losing stability because if I lose stability, that means I'll have to spend anywhere between 100 and 200 administrative points to get plus 1 stability. Getting from plus 2 to plus 3 would cost me 232 and I will have to do it. What again? Oh, that was my decision, right. Oh no, I hit the cap with Hungary. So now I need to find other way to improve my relations with Hungary other than waiting to lose these negative modifiers. I could break my alliance with Austria, but I don't necessarily want to do that. That minus 25 modifier is due to my alliance with Austria, because Hungary considers Austria to be their rival, as you can see. They have Austria flagged. So I would gain plus 25 if I broke my alliance with Austria. I don't think I can do anything else. I could get royal marriage. That might help. And they will actually accept. Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. That should help. 179. Okay, so I almost got enough. I need 190 to start the process. I want to do this as soon as possible. Hmm. Can I do anything else? Dynastic actions? No. Relations? No, I can't really do anything. So it looks like I just have to wait. Economy? No. Loan offer? I don't think that will affect my relations. No, it won't. So I'm just going to wait to lose these negative modifiers, I guess. Not much else I can do. But it looks like I should be able to start annexing Hungary in a few years. I can maintain my improved relations modifier at plus 200 if I keep sending my diplomat there. Minus 0 0.05 morale. Whatever, only for one year. So that doesn't matter too much. Right, oh yeah, how's my force limit right now? 40 out of 40, okay. I thought I'm slightly over force limit, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually surprised the Ottomans didn't declare war on me or, so or something. They could definitely take advantage of my current situation and attack me together with Crimea. And considering I have minus 200 with them, that might happen actually. I hope it won't because I'm not quite ready to go to war with them, especially with my current income. I'm saving up gold right now because I might need it. If I have to raise my army maintenance, I will go into negative income, so that's the reason why I'm saving up my gold, instead of spending it for some buildings. Was that again? Great. More rebels? Annoying. So I'm just going to send a diplomat to Hungary every year to keep this modifier at 200. So I think it went down by minus 2 right now, it did it. Yes, improved relations, 197, so I'll just send my diplomat here, just to cap it out at, one, at 200 again. What? 17 regiments? Hmm. The Papal State's opinion changed by minus 100. I don't really care about that, because I plan to go protestant anyway, so I don't really care about their opinion of me. I'm not going protestant just yet, but that is my plan. I don't want to deal with 17 regiments. I'm just going to take this option. Yeah, let's do it, whatever. I don't care about what they think. 
So can I get 200 here yet? I mean 190. Yeah, I'm so close right now. I'm about to get plus 3, so I should be able to start annexing Hungary next year. Because then I will lose some of these modifiers. Conquered our province and aggressive expansion and declare war. So I will get plus 5 next year. Oh, but I will also get minus 5. Liberated our province. This decay is at 5 per year, right? Okay, so I won't be able to do this just yet. I need to find a way to get to 190. But what else can I do? Hmm. I don't think I can do anything else. I would have to break alliance with Austria if I really wanted to do this. I could send a gift. Is that going to affect my relations? Yes, it will. Okay, so I'm going to send them a gift. 25 gold, ducats, whatever. And now I can start annexing them. Yeah, I totally forgot that you can send a gift and get easy relation improvement. Right. So let's get started then. That was... I can't annex the vassal yet, what? Oh no, I have to wait a few days or a month or something. There we go, now I can do it. So it's going to take 11 years. Alright then. I will probably need at least few more years to actually form the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. So let's get started. Alright. Military access for Brandenburg, yeah whatever. Can I raise my technology yet? No, almost. I still have this level 2 advisor that lowers my administrative technology cost. I think I'm going to replace him with the level 1 advisor. This guy is actually really good, minus 3 national revolt risk. I do have fairly high revolt risk pretty much everywhere. And I will have revolt risk in quite a few of my provinces regardless of my decision about religion. Because... If I were to stay Catholic, I would have revolt risk in Protestant provinces. And if I go Protestant, I will have revolt risk in all of these Catholic provinces. So that guy will actually help quite a lot. But before I grab this dude, I want to take advantage of the administrative technology cost reduction. And I'm about to take advantage of that in just a moment. I need literally one more month, I think, or two more months actually. But it's happening. Yeah, I need one more month. I'm six points short. There we go. Now I can do it. So now I just need extra stability. Right now. I can also unlock my next idea group. I'm not sure what I'm going to get yet. I was thinking about getting diplomatic ideas. They have some useful bonuses. And I don't think I'm going to need diplomatic power for a lot of things. Mostly for diplomatic technology and for culture conversion. But diplomatic technology is not that important. It's not nearly as important as military technologies. And I obviously didn't max my quality ideas yet. And I don't want to take administrative ideas for obvious reasons that I already explained. So I think I'm going to grab diplomatic ideas, but I haven't decided yet. I still got time to decide. I don't have to fill this slot literally right now, instantly. Anyway, let's kick this guy out. I don't need him anymore. And I think I have ahead of time modifier anyway. I do, but I don't plan to spend my points for level 11 right now. And the guy that reduces revolt risk will definitely be useful. And I can save some money, because this dude costs me 7.2 gold per month, that's a lot of money. And this guy is level 1, so he will only cost me 1.8. Obviously that does mean I will get one less administrative point per month. But I'm fine with that. I'd rather get extra 6 gold than extra 1 administrative point right now. I'm getting decent income at the moment, but that's mostly because my army maintenance is literally at zero. Right, oh yeah, I can raise my diplomatic technology as well. I'm not sure if I want to do this right now. I think I'm going to save up my diplomatic power because, as I said, I will need it to convert all of these non-Polish provinces. Yeah, I'm going to save that up. So now I just need to raise my stability to plus 3. And my current plan is to form the Commonwealth. Which means I will be at plus 3 stability, because I can't do that without having plus 3. And then I'm going to convert to Protestant. 
and that will cause me to lose free stability and I will be at zero. Zero stability is not great, but at least it's not negative. And losing free stability from the conversion hurts quite a lot. I don't think I'm going to wait to get even more administrative power, because I could wait even longer to be able to raise my stability to plus one instantly, but that would require too many points and I want to be done with the commonwealth as soon as possible, because that will increase my power significantly. I will be one of the leading powers in Europe once I convert to commonwealth. I just need to take a little bit of time to solve my economic problems, convert all of these provinces to proper religion, and then I can go after the Ottomans. How's my relation with Austria? I should probably do something with my diplomat. I think I'll just send him to Austria or whatever. Yeah. So let's do that. How's Hungary progress? Not bad. Nine more years. So yeah, I should be done with Commonwealth before that happens. Great, lose. Oh, seriously? This is one of these events that I was talking about. The only options here are bad and worse. I can lose one stability or I can lose one stability. Yeah, thanks. Well, I can get plus 0 0.10 morale of armies or plus 5% discipline and plus 25% land force limits modifier. But that's only for 10 years. I think I'll go for extra morale. I would prefer to keep my stability honestly, but yeah, this was really annoying. Because that will delay the commonwealth by at least 2 or 3 years. I'm going to need a lot of administrative points now. I need 182 to raise my administrative power to level 2. I get a negative modifier because of my lack of religious unity, so that's a little bit annoying. And I can't convert to Protestant because then I will lose free stability. I mean, I can't convert before I form Commonwealth. Okay. Do I want to attack them at zero morale? Well, not at zero, but at zero modifier. Nah, I'm going to raise my army maintenance a bit. Just to stay in the positives. So, I'm going to wait a moment for morale to go up. 1.97 is the max. Alright, let's deal with this. Do I actually have a leader? I should have a leader in this other army. No, I don't have any military leaders. No, I don't. Okay. I guess I'll grab one then. Hmm. I have a lot of military points. I could actually save up for level 11. I am 3 years ahead, but hey, I can just wait 3 years to lose this penalty. But I will get 50 points in 1 year, so I guess I'll grab a leader. I will need a leader anyway, regardless of what I do, so... That's something I have to do sooner or later. There we go, that was fast. Now I can lower my army maintenance to 0 again. <laughs> How's my revolt risk? Same everywhere, alright. So now I should be getting decent money, because I kicked out this level 2 advisor guy. I have a lot of modifiers now. It would be nice losing this religious turmoil modifier, because that actually hurts me quite a lot right now. I don't think I'm going to lose that 10% modifier to... Actually, yes, I will. In September. Hmm, I could have waited with technology, with administrative technology increase to save some points, but a little bit too late now, I should have checked this. Because this buff, this effect increases my technology cost and it will expire in September this year, so I wasted some of my administrative points. But I guess it happens, it's not the end of the world. Raise this again and go kill these guys. Dealing with rebels constantly can get a little bit annoying, but it's fine. Yeah, great, I did see that one. Why can't I move there? There we go, now I can. I have to siege this province as well. Yeah, Hungary is not doing well. I need to convert them ASAP. But that will take a few more years, unfortunately. 
Alright, let's siege this. Oh yeah, I'm using speed 5, that's not necessarily what I want to do. I'll just split this and siege both of these at once. Hungarian army isn't very big, is it? Definitely not. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, I think I'm going to save enough administrative points to be able to raise stability to plus 3 instantly. Because I have a feeling that if I use my points to raise stability right now, I will get trolled by another one of these events that will lower my stability by 1 without giving me a choice. Oh, what? Plus 3 inflation or minus 5 trade efficiency for 5 years? I think I'll go for this one because inflation is permanent unless I decide to lower it and I have to spend my points to lower it, I believe. Yeah, I need administrative points to lower inflation, so I'll pass on that. I'll take minus 5% trade efficiency. That hurts my trade income a little bit, but I'm in a decent shape considering the situation. How are my provinces doing? Yeah, not a lot of Catholic provinces left. But that's good, I won't have a lot of provinces to convert. But there are some reformed provinces that I will have to convert as well, regardless of what I do, so that's a little bit annoying. I can't convert them right now, because the religious zeal effect is still pretty much everywhere, I think. No, it's not in Ruthenia. Okay, so I could convert Ruthenia, nice. Okay, I'm going to do that then, what? Yeah, another one. Minus 30 opinion with Bohemia, okay, I'll take that. I can't afford losing stability, again. Okay, I'll split this army, send it here and start converting Ruthenia. 2.7 progress, okay. 37 months, that's actually quite fast. My diplomat needs a new job. I guess I'll improve my relations with Bohemia a bit, wow. Minus 148 with Bohemia, they hate me right now. Yeah, oh yeah, they have me flagged as a rival, right. A neighboring heretic religion, right, because Bohemia actually converted to Protestant. Yes, they did. So I'm heretic to them right now. But not for long, I guess. What about Pomerania? Plus 72, okay, so that's nice. It's only Bohemia hating me for some reason. Yeah, yeah, I know I win. How's the annexing? 33% progress. Not too bad. Let's move back to my province. Great, another one. See, I'm getting trolled by the game right now. I lost one stability again. So now I need to pay for plus 3 stability increase. Which is seriously annoying. And that's going to require close to 400 administrative points. Seriously, the game is trolling me right now. How many points can I save up? Hmm, almost 1200. Okay. I guess I could just spend my diplomatic points on diplomatic technology. I won't need this many to convert all of these provinces to Polish. Level 7 Diplomatic Technology doesn't exactly help me, but I will, I will have to raise it eventually anyway. Level 8 is a little bit better. Dry Dock, Trade Depot, and plus 100 trade range. Trade Depot is kind of nice. Plus 25% local trade power, that's very nice. And plus 1 trade value. And I still got over 400 Diplomatic Power left. And I can also invest in military technology, but I'm going to wait one more year because I would have to pay 10% extra if I raised it literally right now. But I will raise it next year. I can only have almost 1200 points saved up. Then I will stop gaining them anymore. Other than that, yeah, the game is trolling me. I mean, I'm at zero stability right now and in negative prestige. I meet all the other criteria to form the commonwealth, other than having plus 3 stability. So, yeah, just no comment. I had two events that lowered my stability in this part, and there was nothing I could have done about it. 
Oh great, another revolt, really? Two revolts at the same time, okay. So, I'll just... Oh yeah, I should probably raise my army maintenance a bit. Oh, it's already raised. Let's raise it a bit more then. I'll deal with these guys first then. And my army down here can deal with the other group. I'm keeping some troops in Ruthenia just to lower the revolt risk. It's already pretty damn high, wow. I should probably send more troops here. The supply limit is at 25. I'm actually going to keep them here. That's a little bit better, 4.2. I don't have to go up here yet. Oh, Lithuania handled it. That's nice of them. And there we go. So much for that revolt, it was a rather short one. So, idea group. I still didn't pick it. I think I'm going to go for diplomatic ideas. This seems to be the best option. I don't need anything else from the diplomatic idea groups. This is the only group that will actually kind of help me. There are some nice bonuses in here. Plus one diplomat. Lower core creation cost. That's actually quite good though. Especially since I do plan to expand more. Was the finisher. Lower impact on stability from diplomatic actions. That's also useful. I'm not going to pick this just yet, but this is what I'm thinking about. I might still change my mind in the next part or something, but I don't think I will. Anyway, can I get this yet? No, I need to wait. Oh yeah, it's December, so I'm going to wait one more month. And then I can raise my military technology. That will unlock the barracks, plus 50 manpower and minus 5% local regiment cost, and it will give me some more combat bonuses, and it will unlock new artillery. Yes, the matchlock musket. Alright then. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, let's raise it now. And I'm going to swap this to the other one. Oh, I get two different ones, okay. So this one has higher offensive modifier and higher offensive shock, but lower defensive morale. I guess I'll grab this one. This one looks better. At least this one looks more offensive. I don't have a lot of artillery units. I think I only have like three or four. I should probably get more. Anyway, I'm going to finish this part here and continue in next one. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.